Hey everyone, Alex Camilio here, and this week I have a topic that I guarantee affects every real estate professional out there and the strategies that we use to manage that very same topic. And well, you might have guessed it, it's problem clients. So how this came to be is that as many of you know, I help real estate agents all over North America. And eight or nine months ago, I'm on a call with a friend of mine talking about some challenges and some frustrations in his business and what he could improve. And one of the things he brought up was this current transaction that he's working with. And he told me a little bit about it. And the first thing that came to mind, I said, well, have you ever thought about firing this client? And it was something he had never really thought about before in his business was that someone he brought on, he could say, hey, you know what? This isn't working between us and move on to his other clients. So in that situation, eight or nine months ago, it, it didn't necessarily work. But two weeks ago, he calls me out of the blue, all excited to tell me that he had actually fired his first client that the situation had gotten to the point and he used a number of the strategies that we talked about to recognize it and then move on from that client effectively. Um, and he was just excited to share it with me. So I decided to put together an article with those very same strategies that we talked about, plus a few extra, um, as well as this video and outline it for you. So there are three main strategies we use in terms of problem clients in general. And the first is recognizing those problem clients to begin with. Now, whether that's before the transaction or during the transaction, it's all about recognizing them. Now, we're gonna go over some strategies to first avoid, and then if you really need to fire that client so that you can move on and spend more time on your business, your family, really focusing on growing what you're doing as opposed to the absolute time suck that a problem client can become because Let's be honest, we've all been in that situation where we get to the end of it and go, gosh, you could not pay me enough to do that again, right? I'm, I'm sure of it. So first of all, recognize. And while every real estate agent might have slightly different specifics about what's acceptable in their transaction, there seem to be a number of universal ones. And we've broken those down for you. The first is abusive language, just generally abusive language or derogatory quips. They can really set a bad tone for you and your office, stick there for years to come. So look out for that as a sign. The next is time versus value. And that's going to be very different for different real estate agents. And we use this example in the blog, but if you're looking at homes for $100,000 on a quarter acre, it probably doesn't make sense to spend three or four hours on every showing, right? That's not time versus value sensitive. But if you're looking at 400 acre plots for a few million dollars, well, it might be a few hours to go over a four acre plot in certain parts of the country. So again, this is gonna be very different, but you need to set that time versus value standard for yourself. The next is micromanaging, or I jokingly say the dreaded parents. Um, micromanaging can show up in a few different forms, but we suggest looking for things like overly detailed lists for a buyer, right? Of, of things that they want in a home. If it's super detailed and they're handing you like a three page list of the things that, that they need in that home, they might be micromanaging that transaction later on. And the other one is if they have to run very small details by their parents uh, super early on, that's another dead sign that they are going to be way more active during the transaction. So be on the lookout for that. Now, this is one we see all the time and one that can sort of slip by, but really be on the lookout for, which is either bad mouthing or horror stories. So in those first number of conversations that you're having with a prospect, be on the lookout for them telling a whole bunch of bad mouth or horror stories to you because you know what? They're the ones at the center of those stories. All of those stories have one thing in common. It's them. And if they're willing to badmouth all of those people, they're certainly willing to do it to you. So it might not be present. It might, you know, you might start thinking, oh, just this little horror story or that or whatever. But those horror stories really stand out if you start seeing them in multiple and it's something you want to pay attention to. Um, and then last but not least, and this is probably the most classic one, is either getting pre-qualified or not signing a contract. Now, getting pre-qualified usually Top agents will tell you, do not ever show anybody homes without them getting pre-qualified. That's a, that's a first of all. 
But in terms of contracts, again, this can be slightly different between different agents. So oftentimes you need to set that barrier. And how that goes is you say to yourself, I am not willing to do this. I'm not willing to do X work without a contract. Because you provide a lot of value to begin with, but oftentimes there needs to be that line in the sand so that you can get that contract and say, you know what, this is something that your real estate agent does um, for you, and if, if you want me to be that person, here's a contract, you know, we should, we should move together like that. So first of all, it's recognizing those people. If you see abusive language, or they're a time suck, or, or they're a micromanager, or they're bad-mouthing, or telling a bunch of horror stories, or they're not willing to move ahead with a contract, you may want to think about moving on from that prospect altogether. And that's where the avoidance piece comes in. Now, that being said, just because you're moving on doesn't mean you can't make money from them. If it's, you know, you don't focus on that niche, or your attitudes just don't jive and you can find somebody who might communicate with them a little bit better, give a referral, right? Get a referral from sending the business to somebody. Now granted, you don't wanna drop a problem in a friend's lap, but oftentimes just because the two of you can't work together doesn't mean they can't work successfully with anyone. So tip, big tip is avoid at all costs um, those abusive time versus value, micromanaging, those kinds of relationships because on the back end, they cost your business way more than they're worth. Now, if you do get into a situation, if you follow up these things, some people slip through the cracks and that's okay, but sometimes you're gonna get into a situation where you actively need to fire a client. And again, first of all, you need to ask yourself why. Why are you firing this client? The reason I say this is because of this. Let's say someone starts out looking for a home in a neighborhood and then they switch and they're like, you know what, I want farmland, but you don't focus on farmland. Well, their requirements just now don't meet what you do. It's okay to give a referral and say, you know what, I'm not the best person for this. I'm gonna hand off your business to somebody else. But in the cases where you know, you, it's just a problem. It's just a challenge. It's just, it is not going to work no matter what. And, and you've had it. Um, what you can do is just have a conversation with them and let them know, Hey, you might not be the best fit for them, that it doesn't make sense at this point to move forward. And you're going to be releasing them from the contract entirely and give them some reputable sources, uh, to find another agent for them. Right? Not necessarily give them somebody specifically if they are just that bad, but some good places that they can find another agent. Now, I always give this caveat. Talk to your broker when it comes to releasing anybody from a contract or anything of that nature. Um, I'm sure your brokerage also has specific procedures uh, if you don't know about them already. So definitely, definitely talk to your broker on this. Um, but it's all about recognizing, avoiding, and firing when you need to, because I will tell you, if you have not fired a client before, you might want to think about it in your business. I promise you, big picture and doing it effectively and correctly makes all the difference. This has been Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, please drop them below in the comments. We are always happy to answer them. And if you have great stories for us telling us about how you've had to fire a client or the situations you get in or the strategies that you use, we would love to hear them. So please let us know down in the comments. I hope you've had a wonderful day. Thank you so much. This has been Alex Camilio signing out.